So I've actually been seeing this request in my comment section quite a bit. The best team for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald Remastered. I will be honest, I kind of forgot I made this team so long ago, the original one, and it turns out it was kind of lazily made. So hopefully today, I can fix some things that were done on that team. Some Pokemon just didn't belong in there. So today, we're going to be replacing some Pokemon we had previously had on the team for some new ones. Of course, also expect to see some old faces on here too. Hoenn has a reputation for using old best team members. But yeah, you get it. The last best team for Generation 3 Hoenn was bad. We're remastering it today. Just in case you guys do not know what a best team is, allow me to explain what it is real quickly. A best team is a team of six Pokemon that is designed for the absolute best performance for its said Pokemon game. The team revolves around a best starter, in our case being Mudkip. Each team is designed to do well against certain gym leaders, the Elite Four members, Champion, Rival, and the Evil Team leaders. In the end, we have a team that does well against all the most important battles in-game. When making this team, we do provide movesets for each of the Pokemon. We include TM moves, but we do not include Egg moves, nor post-game tutor moves. So yeah, you guys know what's going down with this team, let's hop right into it. Starting off this remastered best team, we have the best starter for Hoenn being Mudkip. Now the reason Mudkip is better than the other two isn't just because of its balanced stats, move pull, etc. It's mainly due to its great typing of water and ground. This dual typing combo is only weak to one typing and that's grass. The ground typing just helps out Swampert so much throughout its journey through Hoenn, covering up so many weaknesses on her team. Swampert not only looks great on paper, it also performs really solidly too. It is great against a lot of the gym leaders and not to mention it also blows through Team Magma's fire types. Blaziken and Sceptile are fine too. Don't don't get me wrong, but Swampert just has the incredible dual typing that truly makes it a dominant starter. As far as Swampert's move pool goes, if you have played up Swampert before, this move set should look familiar to everyone. We got Surf, Earthquake, Ice Beam, and Strength. Surf is obvious because it is needed and it is the best water type move that can get in Generation 3. Earthquake is the best ground type attack Swampert could get for that typing. The TM can be found for that in C4 Cavern right before you encounter your Boxer at Legendary for the first time. Ice Beam is here for coverage and that will cover the only weaknesses it has being Grass. It also helps it against other mons as well. Now, so Something that I didn't know until you guys pointed out to me last time in the comment section in the worst team for Hoenn video is that Ice Beam can be found on the abandoned ship. See, I thought you needed Dive, but it turns out in Generation 3, you do not. So you can get the Ice Beam TM right after you defeat Norman. Pretty cool. Strength is kind of just here for filler, and I mean, hey, it's an HM move, so why not? The HM for that can be found in Rust Rift Tunnel. Once you use Rock Smash, it help Wanda and her boyfriend see each other again. With these moves, Swampert can turn the tide on Roxanne's team, Flannery's team, Winona's Swallow, Swablu, Tropia's, and Altaria, Tate and Liza's team, Team, Sydney's Cacturn and Shiftry, Drake's entire team, Steven's team except for Miss Skarmory, Wallace's Tentacruel and Emerald, Brendan or May Swallow, Nummel, Sugma, Tropias, and Grovile, just be careful of those grass type moves, Wallace's Altaria, Rosilla, and Magneton, Matt's Crobat and Emerald, Archie's Crobat, Courtney's Camerupt, Tabitha's Nummel, Camerupt, and Golbat, and finally Maxi's Crobat and Camerupt. Swamper is an absolute beast, and it once again shows off why it is the best starter in any Hoenn playthrough. Coming up next to the team is a very familiar team member for Hoenn being Crobat. Sometimes I know I knock Crobat for being bad in Generations 2 and 3, but at least in Generation 3 it gets slightly better moves and is more viable. I personally think the Crobat line is the best flying type Pokemon you can get in Hoenn. Skarmory is meh, Swallow falls off towards the late game, and Pelipper... <laughs> Crobat gets some fun coverage moves too, such as Stealing and Giga Drain. Its flying moves are alright, I guess, but I still think because of its more vast move pool, it's still better than Swella for sure. Where to find Zubat is instead of Granite Cave to the left of Dufort Town. Note that Zubat will be very weak starting off, but I guarantee to you guys, it will be super useful once it has Wing Attack at level 13. Test it against Brawly and you will see. But yeah, Crobat is the best flyer option, I really do think so. For Crobat's moveset, we have the same set as the original best team for Hoenn Generation 3, being Sludge Bomb, Fly, Giga Drain, and Toxic. Sludge Bomb is great in Generation 3 because Poison is physical and is the best stab attack Crobat can get. The team for that can be found from a dude inside of the crazy trending place in Dufort Town once you defeat Norma. Fly is here because, duh, we need to get places. Fly's HM can be obtained from your rival right before you get to Fortree City after you complete the Weather Institute. Giga Drain is here for coverage, and it's a great coverage attack despite Crobat having alright special attack. The team for that can be given to you by a girl on Route 123. Have a grass Pokemon in your party when you do though. Toxic is great for fun, installing, and because of Crobat's speed. More than likely, Toxic will hit first. The team for that can be found in Fiery Path after completing a Strength Puzzle. With these moves at Crobat's disposal, it can soar through Brawly's team, Winona's Tropius, Tate and Liza's Claydol, Lunatone, and Solrock, but you really need to watch out for those Rock and Psychic type moves, Wallace's Gym Team, Wands Team is set from Kindra, Sydney's Cacturn and Shiftry, Glacia's Celio and Wall Rain, but it's risky. Steven's Claydol, but be careful of Ancient Power. Wallace's Champion Team, aside from Tentacruel and Gyarados. Brendan Remay's Tropias, Whalmer, and Grovile. Wally's Rosilia. 
Matt's Carvana and Sharpedo, Shelly Sharpedo, and finally Archie Sharpedo. What can I say? Crobat's just really solid. It's been a while since I've gotten to throw a Crobat into best team, so it was really nice to see it again. Welcome back, bud. Before we leave Dew for a 10, we have one more Pokemon to pick up in Granite Cave, being Makuhita. The Hariyama line is definitely not shy of being on a Hoenn best team, because it is literally the best fighting type Pokemon in Hoenn. Broloom is great too, but its grass typing is useless in the grand scheme of things, especially in Hoenn. Hariyama is a pure fighting type, and it gets great fighting attacks, as well as an interesting move pool. What makes me like Hariyama the most though, is that massive base 144 HP stat. Fighting also just does great in Hoenn in general. It all stacks up on paper greatly. Hariyama is also bulky enough to take hits from Norman's Team. That's another reason as to why it's here. For Hariyama's moveset, we have one very similar to the last best team we created. Check it out. We have Vital Throw slash Brick Break, Rock Tomb, Bulk Up, and an HN move of your choice. Strength the Rock, Smash for usefulness. Vital Throw, you get via level up on Hariyama, and it's a move that has 70 base power and the power to never miss. Brick Break, however, I think is better because it has 75 power, but the choice is up to you. Rock Tomb is here for coverage, and that can be obtained from Roxanne. Bulk Up is here for setup, and having Bulk Up against Norman actually comes in a lot handy too. The last slot is up to for an HM move. I would just go for Rock Smash, plus it has the chance to drop your opponent's defense by one stage. With these moves, Hariyama can break down Watson's Magnemite and Magneton, Flannery's team with Rock Tomb, Norman's team, Winona's Swallow, Swablu, Tropius, Pelipper, and Altaria. Just be careful of those flying attacks, really. Technically, Titan lies a Zatu, but that's dumb. Wallace's Celio and Ruby and Sapphire, Juan Celio and Crawdont, Sydney's entire team, Glacius team, Drake's Altaria and Salamence, Steven's Agron, Cradilla, and Armaldo, Wallace's Gyarados and Emerald, Brand or May Swallow, Tropius, Numble, Sugma, and Pelipper, while his Altaria, Delcati, and Magneton, Matt's team, Shelly's team, Archie's team, but be careful flying attacks, Courtney's team, Tabitha's team, and finally Maxi's team. I must say, Hariyama does surprise me a lot with how well it does on this team. It provides decent coverage and can take out a lot of the threats they'll find in the Hoenn region. Next up, we have a very familiar member to the Hoenn best teams, Manetric. It's very obvious to many of you, but just in case someone needs me to say it, an electric Pokemon is an absolute necessity in this region. Memes aside, there really is a lot of water in the Hoenn region, which in turn means it comes with a lot of water Pokemon. It's not short on flying types either, so naturally, we'll try to pick a primary electric type attacker over a grass type one. So to get Electric, you'll want to head over to Route 110 to pick it up at either level 12 or 13. Electric evolves into Manetric at level 26, so you'll already be halfway there. Manetric has got some pretty solid stats, most notably in the special attack and speed department. It may have a very lacking move pool, especially in Generation 3, but that's okay, as its primary purpose is to use electric type attacks. So for the moves we have from Manetric, it's pretty straightforward. Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Bite, and Hidden Power. Thunderbolt's team is given to you by Watson after completing New Mauville. Thunder Wave is a level up move that should already be on electric once you capture it. Bite is earned a little bit later on at level 39, but it will definitely be useful. The lack of physical special split might be annoying in most cases, but it works out very well for Manetric in this instance. And finally, Hidden Power's team is given to you by an old lady in Fortree City. It has a pretty limited move pool, so Hidden Power is just here to fill up the last move slot and give it a little bit of random spice to the Pokemon. With this move set, Manetric can do well against all of Winona's Pokemon instead of from her Altaria, Titan Liza's team with Bite, just watch out for Claydol's Earthquake, Wallace's Gym team aside from Whiskash, Wan's team aside from Whiskash and Kindra, Sydney Sharpedo or Cronaunt, Phoebe's team aside from Sableye, Glacius Celio and Walrein, Steven's Skarmory, Claydol, and Metagross watch the Earthquakes, Wallace's champion team aside from Whiskash, Brendan or May, Swallow, Tropius, Wilmer, and Pelipper, while his Gardevoir, Matt's Carvana, Sharpedo, and Golbat, Shelly Sharpedo, Archie's Crobat and Sharpedo, Tabitha's Golbat, and finally Maxi's Crobat. If I've said it once, I've gotta say it again. Manetric might not have the best move pull in the world, but in a Hoenn playthrough, it absolutely dominates with its electric typing. I can only imagine how good it would be if it had a wider move pull. In the number 5 slot, we have a new Pokemon and coming to the best team series, and that is my favorite ghost type Pokemon, Bayonet. I'm surprised at how much I like this Pokemon that I have never considered to put it on a best team. I guess to be fair, Bayonet isn't the best Pokemon in the world, which is why they give it a Mega Evolution, and even that version of it is rarely used. But I digress, as Bayonet is here now and ready to lend a big helping hand to us. Shippet can be found on Mount Pyra between the levels of 22 and 29, making that level 37 evolution not seem so bad. Bayonet is pretty decent enough to work for us here. Most of its stats are pretty mediocre, but it does have a very very nice 115 attack to work with. Again, it's certainly not the best ghost type in the series, but it's really the best we have to work with in this generation. And with a pretty okay move pull to work with, I'm really happy to welcome it to the team. Speaking of its move pull, let's just move right into the moves it will be using to take on the challenges of Hoenn. We've got Shadow Ball, Will-O-Wisp, Psychic, and Secret Power. Shadow Ball's team can be found on Mount Pyre on the sixth floor. Will-O-Wisp is here to help us get burns off if we happen to be going up against a tougher opponent that needs to be witted away instead of fought on. That is a level up move learned by Shepet at level 32. Psychic is here 
here for a little bit of extra coverage. And because it's just such a nice attack to have. Bayonet has pretty okay special attack, so it's fine. That TM can be found on Victory Road or one at the Mauville game corner. Choose however you'd like to get it, doesn't really matter. And finally, we have Secret Power here, as just a normal move with the added bonus of setting off potential secondary effects. This team is given to you by a boy on Route 111. This moveset helps Bennett send shivers down the spines of Tate and Liza's team, Phoebe's team aside from Sableye, Steven's Claydol and Metagross, Wallace's Tentacruel and Emerald, Wally's Roselia and Gardevoir, Matt's Golbat, Archie's Crobat, Tied with his Golbat, and finally Maxi's Crobat. Bayonet might not be the Pokemon getting the most knockouts on the team, but it can really put a dent into a lot of Pokemon towards the end of the game. So I view this new addition as a valuable member of the team. And last step, we have another new member added to the best team series, being our replacement for Slacking. That Pokemon is Explob. Now, of course, on paper, Slacking is powerful, but you all know what I'm about to say. Truant. It really does make Slacking a miserable Pokemon to use sometimes. Even if you can get some decent hits off with it, it's just not going to be that fun to use. That's why we're using Explob instead. Wismer can actually be found pretty early on and will likely be the second Pokemon to capture on your journey, being found on Route 116. The reason it's at the end of the list is because I wanted to have it be the final surprise for all of you. Also, it doesn't get really good until late game anyways. Definitely not because I forgot to order it properly and I'm too lazy to adjust the rest of the script. That would just be silly. Anyway, Anyways, Xbot is one you definitely have to work a little harder for, as you won't actually be able to have Loudred evolve until level 40. But I like to think it's worth it as it has pretty decent stats having 104 HP, 91 in both attack stats, and pretty okay defense and speed to round it off. And of course the move pool it has access to is not half bad. So that said, let's hop into what we'll be using. So this normal Pokemon's moveset we have some natural choices of type coverage being Return, Blizzard, Fire Blast, and Shockwave. Return is here because it is the most solid normal type move you can get on a Pokemon in my opinion. That team will be given to you by Professor Cosmo in Fall Arbor Town in exchange for the Meteorite. Next is Blizzard. It never hurts to have extra ice coverage. And while Ice Beam is a lot better of a move, it's also more annoying to get, only being available at the Marvel Game Corner at this point. If you want to work for it, then by all means go for it. But for me, I'm sticking with Blizzard. That TM can be purchased at the Lolico department store. Next is Fire Blast, which again presents another Game Corner dilemma, as that's where its better counterpart, Flamethrower, is located. Fire Blast TM is also purchasable at the Lolico department store. And lastly, we have Shockwave. It's really just here in the event that our main launch attacker gets knocked out. And finally, Shockwave's TM will be given to you by Watson after you defeat him in his gym. And finally, these moves will help x Blood pump the jam against all of Winona's Pokemon aside from her Altaria with Shockwave, Tate and Liza's Claydol and Zatu, Wallace's GM team aside from Whiskash, Wan's team aside from Whiskash and Kindra, Sydney's Cactor and Shiftry, Sharpedo and Crawdon, Glacia's entire team, Drake's team, Steven's Skarmory, Claydol and Metagross, Wallace's champion team aside from Whiscash and Ludicolo, Brendan or May, Swellow, Tropia's Wilmer and Pelipper, Wallace's Altaria, Brazilian Magneton, Matt's Carvana, Sharpedo, and Golbat, Shelby, Sharpedo, Archie's Crobat, and Sharpedo, Tabitha's Golbat, and finally Maxi's Crobat. Honestly, while Slacking may be powerful on the surface, that churn ability is such a major drawback. I honestly can't understand why I chose it over x as they both accomplish the same goal, but x does it more gracefully. Plus, it's always a joy to add a new Pokemon to the best team series, so I hope you all will welcome x to the team. Well, that pretty much wraps up yet another Hoenn team. I really enjoyed creating this team as I really tried to break out of my usual picks for this region. Of course, in the best team, you do want to use the best Pokemon possible, so you're naturally going to get quite a bit of repeats from time to time. But it's always fun to just sit down and think of the possibilities and surprise you all with some mons that you might not have expected to see. So tell me, what did you all think of this team? Did you like the choice of Pokemon or are there some others you had in mind? Definitely let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me for Further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Want to support me further, further in Game Call Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leon, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Austin Lego, Dirt Wiz Austin, and Sudden Grider did. And I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapping this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.